Okay, guys and gals, let's go over uh, crude oil. All right, we're going to make this a short video. I'm going to show you how to trade trend versus chop. Okay, let's go over to uh, yesterday's market. Yesterday's market, I'm going to show you how we trade a trending market versus a chop market. So, easy way to do it is let's look at the 9 sim real quick, and I'll show you a trend market versus a chop market. Remember, the market can only do two things. It can only trend or it can be in a range. So when you log in on any given market on any given day, and we got traders that trade futures, <coughs> currency, stocks, ETFs, OEX options with the system. It doesn't matter what type of market that you trade. It's the same exact concept. You have to establish one thing. Are we in chop or trend? It's, it, that's all the market can do. It can either go vertical on you during the day or it can go sideways on you. And if we go vertical, we need to know how we're in a vertical market and what to do in a vertical market. We want to take the arrow-based system. If we are in a chop market, which is a range market like we are today, then we want to trade market profile. So if we are in yesterday, if you look at it, we were in an overall trend market. Trend market was yesterday. And we want to take arrows. We want to take all arrows in the direction of the trend. So we want to take sell arrows in direction of the trend yesterday. So that's why our five and three sim arrows worked so great yesterday because we were in a trend market. So let's just blow that up a little bit so you understand. This is a trend market, and I'll show you how you can see that really quick. This is our nine sim Rinko. Remember, the market is not chaos. It's very easy to understand. It's all about order flow. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to establish if we're in a trend market or we're in a chop market. So yesterday. The easy way to understand, we had seven major sell signals off our 9 sim Renko. Then we had the 5 and 3 sim arrows firing for confluence for the setups. So if you look at where the arrows are placed, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, those were the seven major inflection points to go short on crude yesterday for the entire session. Actually, here's eight. I'm sorry. We had eight for eight. It was eight for eight yesterday on my nine sim Renko. Actually, it was ten for ten. Here's one also. Right there. So really, I'm sorry, nine for nine yesterday on my the entire session. These are the points you want to go short and look for five sim Renko trades for entries with market delta. It's a trend market. How do I know it's a trend market? The easy way to look at is the angle of my longer MA. Moving averages are worthless by nature, but they're great for trend direction. So if I look at the angle of the MA, my magenta MA, I am angled what? I am angled down. So that lets me know that I'm in a hard trend market. But I'm going to show you a little bit another way how to do it, though. The angle shows we're down. More importantly, the weakest part of the market is when you get below all three of my MAs. I got a longer, intermediate, and a real small MA. Let me blow this up. If you are below all three MAs, this is the weakest part of the market you're going to be in. Once you see a green bar print, that those are counter trend traders coming in the market. Those are novice, inexperienced traders coming in the market to pull the market back up so the professional money can get back short. So if you notice, here's the counter trend traders that came in the market that got taken to the woodshed yesterday. They came in there, gave us an opportunity to short. They came in here, gave us an opportunity to short. They came in here. You can see every inflection point where the counter trend traders gave us a chance on a retracement. When it closes green, the opposite color of the trend, start looking at your five sim Rinko for arrow short. Once you see that, you can get short the market. 
So you can see how trend markets are very easy to pick off because what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the markets to get below all three MAs and then simply look for counter trend traders to come in the market, the novice inexperienced traders that counter the trend of the market, that try to catch the falling knife. We're going to let them pop the market back up and then we're going to start watching my five and three sim arrow trades. So when, what we're going to do is on the five sim then and the three sim, we're simply going to look for arrows short. So my nine sim was in a hard downtrend and it closed a green reversal bar showing the counter trend traders come in. I'm just going to go down. Here's an angle to 50 is down on the nine sim. I'm going to look for symmetry dot shorts, arrow shorts. Caught a huge one yesterday. Air, even catching symmetry with negative market delta. Caught a huge one there yesterday. Caught another one yesterday. I mean, it was just on fire yesterday. So that's how you can do it. You can use the arrows in conjunction with the overall trend of the market. And that's how we want to do it. That's when you trade the arrows on the five and the three sim Rinko with the overall trend. Now we're trending about three out of five trading days on any given market on any given week. You get about three opportunities like this a week where you get a hard trend, you get below all three. That's a five sim Rinko. So when you turn green, when you close green, a green reversal bar, and you're below all three and you're hard trending down, when you close a green reversal bar, start watching that five sim Rinko to butt up against symmetry dots and watch market delta to pull you in with a negative market delta. So these are all five Simrico entries right there with arrows on symmetry dots. Now the three Simrico with my arrows, the best time to trade those guys is right here. When, we're, when we are open versus close, the body of this candle is away from the smaller MA. Start watching for your three Simrico trades. But I don't want to trade those until I break through symmetry dots. When I break through the symmetry dots off the five Sim, which I'll show you, that's when you want to look for three sim trades. So in other words, when we start cranking down yesterday, and this is a sell off the five sim with the arrows, I want to start looking for three sim trades right when we close below the symmetry on the opposite side. Look for symmetry to close on the, here we broke symmetry dots. Guess where our three sim trade fired? You know it, right here. Perfect trade, our three sim fired here. Our three sim fired here after breaking through symmetry. So now you not only got your five sim trades working for you after the nine sim and a hard trend shows counter trend traders are popping in the market. You've got what? You got your three sim entries right here. So you got several opportunities to go short the market off the five and three. I just like to use the three only when we break through symmetry on the other side because that means we're in a weakest part of the market and when the nine sim has spread. It's very easy to understand the system. It's very system, very sophisticated algorithm we're working with, but very, very easy way to implement this if you trade it that way. So we know how to trade trend then. We know we can take the arrows off. This is my nine sim Renko to find the trend in the market. It takes you a half a second to see if we're trending or chopping. Okay. We're definitely in trend all day yesterday, all shorts. If you took one buy yesterday on crude, if you look at your trade blotter yesterday and you took any buys on crude yesterday, you are wrong. You're trading the system completely wrong. You're totally fighting the tape. Every cent 69.40 all the way down to 66.40, okay, you should be short all the way down. The system did not give one buy setup, not one, and that's how we take advantage of our, our weaker trading opponents, okay? So that's how we do it. On trend days, we look for the, when, it, when the nine sim gets a green, green reversal bar, we look for five sim entries off symmetry. If you break through symmetry off the five sim and we got space in between below all three MAs, that's when your three sim goes to work. Keep it simple. Do that. Systems absolutely incredible when you do it that way now that's when you take arrows and that's without even market profile that's not even talking about market profile that's just trading the nine sim for trend the five and three sim for entry period 
only trading those three charts with market delta get you in when the arrow fires for confirmation. Now, what about CHOP? How do we trade CHOP? Here's when you don't take the arrows. Right now, today, here's the current market we're in. We are in a wedge. Now I want you to look at the angle of the magenta MA. Now the angle of the magenta MA is what? We are what? We are horizontal, meaning we're sideways. So now what do we got to do? Now what we have to do if we're horizontal is we do not take any arrows. Zero. Arrows that come up on the 5 and 3 sim are come up for one reason. They are sweet spots in the market, typically around a 62% retracement, where the market can reach retest for a trade setup. Now we're in CHOP. Okay, so let's get this off here. Now we're in CHOP. So today's trading, we're in CHOP or range. And this is where traders tend to fail. All the traders that I've experienced over the years, they do have no clue how to trade CHOP. Absolutely no clue. And they give up all their winnings and their ticks because we usually chop two, sometimes three days a week. And they give all their trend chop in, uh, up and chop. Now we're in chop. So now what do we do? We do not take any arrow retracements off my five and three sim. Well, how are we going to make some ticks during the day? Well, very simple. I told you we have market profile for you. This is just a nine sim Renko. I told you we have market profile. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to look for what? We're going to look to sell and buy market profile. Let me show you the difference between trend and chop. So remember, there's only two markets. Every time you log in, we have a trend market. Very easy to understand. I don't care what market you trade in. Oops. We have a trend market and we have a chop market. That's the easiest way to understand the rhythm of the market. You don't have to get really in, more in-depth than that, okay? Traders make the market too difficult. It's not difficult. Either you're trending or you're chopping. Don't make it any more difficult than that, okay? We're trending. We have a trend market or we have a chop market. Keep it simple. Do not make this overly difficult when you're looking at these different markets. We're either going to trend or we're going to chop, okay? So yesterday, trend market. It was 9 for 9 on my 9 Simrico calling the inflection points on the spots. All session. It was absolutely on fire. Great setup. Chop today. Look at chop. Now what do we do? Now you can't take no arrows. In chop, you take zero arrows off the 5 and 3 sim until we break out. No arrows. We do not want to trade arrows. Well, yesterday we traded the arrows here and just beautiful day. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal how the system called the 300 tick move and so now if we don't take arrows in chop range how are we going to trade the market remember that market profile i talked about let's take take a look at market profile market profile the difference in range and chop is this okay if i get into range or chop then I don't want to trade the arrows. How, do, how can I trade it? There's two important market profiles that I have for you. And this is the internals of the market. It's not my opinion or your opinion. This is actually order flow coming in from hedge funds, prop firms, high frequency trading. You have a thin red line and thin green line. Thin red, thin green, thick green, thick red. That's all I want you to concentrate on shop. I don't want you to even think about looking at the blue line, which is the most volume that's traded at the control point in CHOP. I do not want you to look at this. This means nothing to me in the middle. You do not want to fiddle in the middle in range. If you fiddle in the middle in range and you take arrows in range, then you're going to probably get stopped out quite a bit. And I'm talking pretty much almost every single trade that you pretty much look at, you're going to get chopped up. This is range, okay? This is range right there. We're in a range market. Don't trade the middle. I want you to look at the outer edges. Outer edges are going to be between volume profile, the thick red, and the thin red. There's your sell point. Between volume profile and the thick red, there's your sell point. 
between the thin green and the thick green, there's your buy point. Between the thin green and the thick green, there's your buy point. This is called range. You, you buy the low, you sell the high in range. That's the only way you can trade chop using market profile. You cannot trade any arrows in this range. This is chop, and you will get chopped up. You cannot trade arrows. You can only trade the range. You can only trade the high and low of the range with market delta entry. You do not take any arrows long or short because retracements will not work very well in range. You look to sell or buy the outer edges with confluence. You got your, your low value area on both sides and the high value area on both sides. That's how you're going to trade chop. Okay, now, how do we know we're going to go from chop to trend? The best way you're going to know you're going to go from chop to trend is this. So there's chop. How do you know you're going to go into a trend market like this? How do you know? You're going to decisively break out of the range. So what's going to happen is this morning is we're going to have to decisively break outside of the range on either side. It's going to decisively break outside of the range on either side. Once you break outside the range, I want you to watch your 9 Simrenko and getting a candle close on that smaller MA. And then you get below all three MAs or above MA and you're back into trend, Frank. It's that simple. So now we know how to trade chop versus range. Very simple. There's only two markets you're going to ever get yourself into on any given market. I don't care if you have 70 years experience in the market or if you have one day experience in the market. This is how you're going to see it. You're going to either know you're in range or chop. I mean, trend or chop. If it's angled down, you're in trend. If, all, if you're down below all three MAs, you're in trend. Only take arrows. If you're sideways in chop, only trade market profile until you break outside the range. All right? Keep it simple. Only market profile until you break out. Only market profile. All right? That simple. Only market profile. So to recap, when you log in on any given market, look at your 9 Sim Rinko chart. You can establish it right away if you're trending or you're chopping in that direction. If you're above all three moving averages or you're below all three, you're trending in that direction. If you're horizontal, sideways, then you're in a chop range. You can't take no arrows off the five and three sim, only market profile, selling the high, buying the low. Then you wait for the breakout. 